Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I know you have not heard me from a time. It's just I had to move. Now I'm in a better environment. That means I'm not stuck. I can walk as much as I can. So without sitting time, let's dive into a new video by Webo. Let's go. And some offensive, as well as the latest developments on the front line, including the video footage we have received from the fighting soldiers. So starting out in the Odihiv front, we see that the Ukrainian forces continue their attacks here to the south of Novodanilivka, as well as the village of Malatokmachka. So here in the southern part, the Ukrainian forces managed to advance a short bit here south of the main road between Dunvodenilivka and Novopokrovka, which are the villages by the front line and point of contact. So we see that the general advances of the Ukrainian forces are in the direction of the east and the south, while the western parts are less uh, prioritized in these offensive operations. Something else to notice is that although we first saw these larger advances, we are now seeing these smaller advances. The main reason for this is because the Ukrainian forces changed their main strategy from attacking with armored columns to attacking with infantry. And the way they do this is that they transport from the villages into the front line and then they depart with the infantry, they dis the infantry dismount from the vehicles and then they advance through the forest fields and the forest patches. So the current fighting is mainly between infantry of the both sides, where the Russian infantry launches artillery strikes on the Ukrainian forces, as well as uh, meeting them with their own trenches. I'm just wondering how many casualties has the Ukrainian have so far? As the Ukrainian forces try to advance and capture the Russian positions. However, here we see a combination of both an armored column and infantry as the armored column drove through the main road and dismounted the infantry as they were going along. And the infantry then moved southwards. We see here there's this main forest patch here, and then there are some southern forest patches down to the southern parts of the front line. So they are essentially taking control over these forest patches rather than anything else. So the Ukrainian forces realized that a straight ahead force with armored columns isn't going to work as the Russians have properly prepared for the advancing Ukrainians and in preparation of the offensive they have made several defensive positions and fortified their front line. So this leaves the Ukrainians with the option of attempting with their current strategy and tactic of sending infantry to capture some positions before they launch their armored columns to attack. So essentially they are weakening down with infantry before they launch their armored attacks. The demerits for this tactic would be that they would lose many more infantry than armored vehicles in comparison to earlier where they lost a lot more armored vehicles in comparison to infantry. So essentially it takes a huge toll on the soldiers rather than the vehicles themselves. Now let's move on to the section where I cover the territorial changes over the past couple of days as Syriac Maps is back and he's updating again which leaves me with more accurate depiction of the territorial changes but before we get into it make sure to leave a like and subscribe to help out my channel and to get notified whenever I upload a video. You can also support me on PayPal or on Patreon whichever you prefer. The links will be down in the description below. Now starting out we have to look at the central part of south of Velika Novosilka where the Ukrainian forces have continued the armored assaults in between the villages of Novodonetsk and Yuroshine. This is to kind of go around the frontline villages, which they have detected will just cost them a lot of units, as Russian forces have the high ground here to the west, which allows them to just shoot down on the Ukrainian positions. So instead of having to deal with them villages by village, they advance here in the central part, trying to cut off this road between Kremenchik and uh, Staromolivka, and taking the village which I have deemed to be a very important village based on the fact of its location as well as its size and its fortification by the village. So essentially the Russian forces want to hold on to this village as it will allow them to supply all of these villages to the north of it as well as let them hold the whole area filled with hills to the northwest. However, if the Ukrainians manage to capture it, they would be able to take advantage of that, cut off the, the supplies and essentially take control over this whole ledge filled with the river line. 
So with this, the Russian forces have been pushed back and the Ukrainian forces managed to capture a few more fuels, but they're still a bit of a distance away. So the Russian forces try to withstand this assault and destroy as many vehicles as they can as the Ukrainian forces attempt to advance and cover this whole area, taking the control over these villages and cutting off their supply, which would allow them to take full control over this ledge. Then we have the, the advance that I mentioned earlier here to the south of Novodenilivka, where the Ukrainian forces have advanced in between the two former areas. Then we have to the northeast of Fdivka, where the Ukrainian forces have managed to do a small scale counter attack, where they have managed to advance towards the villages here to the south of Krasnodarivka. and in the direction of Krasnodarivka itself, trying to cut off the connection between them as the main road between them. There's also the second road here to the north, however that is his secondary road. Then there's the railways, which is right by the front line. So essentially if the Ukrainians manage to cut off the southern road, then they will be able to threaten the Russian position by Krasnodarivka. After this we have the recent fighting by Lokove, where the Russian forces have been pushed out of the village of Bashikatki. And here we have seen a lot of advances by the Ukrainian forces. After the capture of the village of Lokove, they then advanced southwards. However, they were met with heavy fire by the Russian forces. Now this fire is actually not well documented so far. However, we have received this video, which I assume is on this village. I have not made the geolocation as I have a very difficult time doing that with this uh, sort of video. However, we can see in this video that there's a lot of TOS-1 strikes, which is similar to what Remy reported was hitting the village of Byatkatki, which I just call Hatki. So the Hatki village was destroyed uh, completely by these TOS-1 missiles and the Ukrainian forces there were most likely also severely hit by it. Then we see the changes here by the south of Bakhmut in the southern flank in the direction of Klishivka where the Ukrainian forces managed to capture this forest patch here to the north and they are now very close to the fortified area here to the north of Klishivka which would be important for the Russians to hold if they want to defend the southern flank properly. So far the Ukrainians are slowly advancing towards it. And that's all of the territorial changes for this video. Now we move on to the part where we see a lot of combat footage. Starting out we have this video of a tank that was sent to the Ukrainian lines. This tank was self-propelled. It was, it was using an autopilot system which allowed them to drive by itself. The Russian forces captured this Ukrainian tank and then filled it with a lot of explosives before they started sending it back. However, it seems to have hit a mine on the woods way back, so it was uh, prevented from advancing. And after this, the explosions, uh, explosives that was filled within the tank then blew up. So in the end, it didn't really hit anyone, but it was a pretty cool explosion. Then we have this firefight right here. We don't see really see anything other than a bunch of explosions and exactly how terrifying it is to fight in a trench, especially with artillery constantly landing in between the firefights. And generally, you don't know when you're gonna get hit. You just sit there waiting for it to happen. Then we have this video here of a British ACS AS90 155mm artillery cannon from Britain. This is self propelled artillery. And it has been reported that they received approximately 24 of these. So, this is one of those accurate Western equipment artillery systems that they've received from the West. This shows again how the Ukrainians have these advanced technologies that allow them to have these precision strikes which allow them to attack the Russian forces, although they are in the bunkers and in the trenches, this accurate fire allows them to actually hit their locations. As for this video here, we see a BMP and a Ukrainian tank, and they are dismounting the infantry as they try to cover for them, as they try to go into take cover as the Russian forces start launching artillery strikes on their positions. 
So this is very interesting because it shows the change of strategy before they were just tanks, armored vehicles being sent to the front. Now we're seeing infantry dismounting from these areas and allowing them to actually hold the territory as they advance to instead of ending up uh, dismounted or stuck in the mud as we saw in this one, the uh, Ukrainian tank was stuck in a hole. And then in these videos, we see that there is some aftermath of these advances, where they also end up losing a bunch of armored vehicles. We're most likely going to see a few more of these videos in the future, as the Ukrainian forces have launched multiple armored uh, columns to the front line, and the Russian forces continuously attack with all of the equipment, including KA-52 helicopters, like in this video here, where I see a KA-52 helicopter tracking a Ukrainian armored vehicle, and it shoots it down from a long distance from where the tank cannot even see the KA-52 helicopter. And then we have this video here of a cornered ATGM shooting at a M2A2 Bradley from a very far distance here as well. And in this final video, we also see another ATGM, this one shooting uh, at a grouping of Ukrainian infantry moving down the front line. So generally, we have these advanced Russian weapons of the ATGMs as well as the helicopters just shooting at all of the advancing Ukrainian positions. So most of the Ukrainian losses so far in this offensive seem to be of these prepared positions with ATGMs as well as the Russian Air Force. And then finally, we have this video here of a Ukrainian armored vehicle hitting a uh, anti-tank mine and just uh, destroying the armored vehicle. So generally, we're seeing a lot of Ukrainian losses and not as many uh, Russian losses. Most of the Russian losses we've seen so far from this uh, assault, this offensive, seems to be uh, infantry on infantry where the Ukrainian forces attack Russian trenches and those infantry for uh, fighting in the trenches end up being uh, eliminated. So in the end, so far in this offensive, we're seeing that both sides are committing a lot of units, a lot of uh, armored vehicles, a lot of uh, general equipment to this part of the front line and essentially using all of it up into this part of the front line as the Ukrainians are trying to completely cut off the land route between Russia and Crimea to try and cut off all of the supplies to this western part and take huge heaps of territory. Meanwhile, the Russians are trying to hold it to prevent this from happening, and they're trying to inflict as many casualties on the Ukrainians along the way. So generally, we're seeing that so far, nothing has been achieved except for huge amounts of casualties on both sides, but mostly on the Ukrainian side, as they are now on the offensive and they are attacking straight into heavily fortified Russian positions, as well as with no air support, no, the Russians simply have too much of an advantage on this part, and it's just horrifying to see. Yeah, he's basically right, and it seems to be, it's gonna be the sinking winner, and that's all I have to say, but one thing I can say is like I'm back in a new environment. As you can see, my background has changed. It's going to become better. And now I can do more video without being limited by everything. I would thank you. This was an Africa Ranch, and I hope to see you guys on my channel next time. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Bye.